Today, let's talk about Ethereum Classic and the 51% attack that went down. And did you know that XRP cannot be 51% attacked? What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Crypto Bobby, AKA your favorite bear market beard commentator. Hope you are having a great day, great night, wherever you are watching or listening in from. And yes, today, let's talk about Ethereum Classic, which is still to this day, one of the larger proof of work cryptocurrencies out there and what the 51% attack means for that. As of the time of recording this, this is something that's happened in the past 24 hours. A lot of exchanges are still either shut down or halting things, freezing things. Uh, so it's still a developing situation, but what can we learn from this as of the time of recording this? What are my thoughts in general and how can you perhaps just develop your own thoughts and theses based upon this and a lot more. So let's hop into it all today. Let's go. So if you've been on crypto Twitter, on Reddit, on a number of the crypto blogs recently, you have probably seen that Ethereum Classic with the ticker symbol ETC has been 51% attack. There has been a fairly large block reorganization. If you're not familiar with what that is, we can get into it in a little bit more detail here. But first of all, why is that significant? Well, ETC or Ethereum Classic is a proof of work algorithm coin. Um, and there have been 51% attacks and there will continue to be 51% attacks on a lot of these proof of work algorithm coins in the future. One of the notable aspects of Ethereum Classic here though, for better or for worse, is Ethereum Classic is the 17th largest cryptocurrency by market cap at the current time. It is valued at over $500 million. So it's a half a billion dollar cryptocurrency. It is not small by any stretch. It has some notable backers. Uh, you have DCG, which digital currency group, Barry Silbert. Uh, you also have the team at IOHK, uh, Charles Hoskinson, who is behind Cardano. IOHK uh, is also doing a significant amount of the development on Ethereum Classic at this point in time. So Ethereum Classic was 51% attacked and how did this happen? What's going on with it right now? Well, Coinbase came out with a uh, blog post that I thought was actually pretty informative on the subject. So I would recommend if you are interested in this, I would definitely recommend you take some time to read through this. And regardless of your thoughts, regardless of your feelings on Coinbase, I do think that they did a good job with this blog post in general. Now, you might say to yourself, well, hey, Coinbase, you know, maybe you shouldn't have listed a token, a listed a, a cryptocurrency that could even really had a realistic shot at being 51% attacked. Valid criticism, but let's just take the blog post for what it is. And I thought it was fairly detailed and fairly good. So Coinbase starts off with just a description of you know, really what is proof of work in general, going all the way back to the Satoshi white paper um, and talking a little bit about what happens when a majority of CPU power in this you know, in this point in time, GPU or ASIC power uh, is controlling the nodes in the space. If somebody does get over 51% of the hash power uh, of the computing power, they have the ability to uh, kind of remove the honesty out of the system. And there are a number of different things that when a 51% attack uh, does, does occur that could go down. And in this case, there is a blockchain reorganization where a kind of singular entity that is owning over 51% 51% of the hash power is able to reorganize the blocks in a matter that may or may not be favorable to them, kind of readjust really the, the past history of this. And one of the big advantages of that is double spend transactions, aka spending cryptocurrency, really in this case twice, spending Ethereum Classic twice. So not gonna dive into all of that in full detail. I think if you really want to, I highly recommend reading this. I'll put a link to the Coinbase blog in the YouTube and podcast descriptions, so you can certainly check that out. But kind of taking the lens off of this, really what Coinbase said went down is they started noticing a few days ago, uh, really two days ago on January 5th, as of recording this, it is January 7th, but as of January 5th, they noticed uh, deep chain reorganizations on Ethereum Classic started out with no double spends. They saw that somebody was reorganizing the Ethereum Classic blockchain. And at first they did not necessarily think it was suspicious because there were no double spend transactions. And then about the third time that they saw that, they noticed that there, were, there was a double spend transaction for 600 ETC. Uh, and at that point in time, they ceased interacting with the ETC blockchain and uh, essentially did not allow for kind of a Coinbase to be 
according to them, did not allow for Coinbase or Coinbase customers to be a target of the double spend, so no funds were lost. Now, summing up exactly what happened, according to Coinbase, and this is um, you know, this is from, from their public information, or from what they've supplied to us publicly, they said the total value of the double spends that they had observed were 88,500 ETC or $460,000, which is a fair amount. That's a, a pretty, pretty good amount of, you know, pretty good amount of, of monetary value there. Now, there are some folks out there that are disputing that. Ethereum Classic uh, has a kind of news and information Twitter profile and they have said some things that they believe that this might have been due to an ASIC manufacturer, Lindsay, confirming uh, or testing these new uh, ASIC ETH, mach ETH hash machines that you know were not necessarily selfish mining and these new machines essentially are so efficient that uh, they were causing you know, over 51% of the hash power to be attributed to that private mining pool. Now, what Coinbase is saying directly, uh, really di directly contradicts that, but a couple really interesting points, at least in my mind, that we can kind of gain from this is number one, this is something that uh, was actually pointed out by a few different people from the start. So this blockchain or this block reorg lasted over a thousand blocks and really close to two days. And this was something that uh, a number of different people were had noticed. Uh, Pierre Rochard, who is a uh, what some people might call a Bitcoin maximalist, uh, but whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's up to you. I like Pierre. He's a good dude. Um, so he actually noticed was interacting on Twitter and this was yesterday. So this was actually January 6th before even a lot of this information became even more public. But he looked on January 6th and there was kind of rumors swirling around. This is at 3.50 in the afternoon. Was there a deep reorg on Ethereum Classic yesterday uh, while interacting with somebody from the Ethereum Classic uh, community uh, who works for one of the, the dev teams there? I believe uh, Donald McIntyre, and then Pierre says, "Yes, yeah, seventy-five block or seventy-five blocks deep." I hear with a double spend. The double spends actually increased at that point in time. I think draw it out for about a thousand. Not necessarily all the double spends, but uh, it lasted quite a bit longer than uh, from the time of pointing this out yesterday. So there were a number of people who actually saw this ongoing at the time it was occurring if they were monitoring the on-chain uh, on chain information. So I thought that was interesting in and of itself that Pierre and a number of people had kind of that information prior to. Now, one thing, and this is also a, I don't want to say this is a conspiracy theory or at all. This makes a ton of sense. Uh, Honor Masters, who works at CoVenture uh, in business development at CoVenture. Uh, I've had Nikhil on the channel before CoVenture has a quantitative uh, quantitative crypto fund as well as a crypto VC fund. She said this, recent ETC ongoing 51% attack targeted the OKX exchange. Funny enough, three days ago, OKX enabled shorting capabilities of ETC. Is it a coincidence? Well, how about this, Honor suggests. Uh, step one, buy ETC shorts. Step two, launch a 51% attack. Step three, we already see that ETC is down over 10% against the BTC pair since the time of this 51% attack really becoming public. Step four, profit. That is, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy theory, it makes a shit ton of sense if you ask me uh but definitely something to consider is that when you you know when you put in the capability to short these assets there is a really solid possibility for financial and economic motivations for somebody to you know attack these lower uh you know less secure proof of work chains out there so definitely something that you want to take into consideration and again if we pull up the if we pull up the chart here a lot of lot of red a lot of a lot of downturn sell volume in ethereum classic as soon as this information became public over time so generally speaking i think you know you are free to make your own determinations on what this means for you what this means for ethereum classic as well as what this mean for potentially other proof of work cryptocurrencies that you may or may not own um, one thing I think that this goes to show is that in a lot of cases, people might say, you know, Bitcoin is old news. Bitcoin is, 
is boring. Bitcoin is crap. It's the first one, uh, but it's the slowest. It's yada, yada, yada. Uh, I do still think that the level of security with Bitcoin is something that is is undervalued by a lot of people because the likelihood of this happening to Bitcoin, while it is still a uh, it is still a possibility. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it is impossible to 51 percent attack Bitcoin. Uh, it is certainly much harder to do so. Uh, but I do think that people, especially when you're talking about other proof of work cryptocurrencies, dis discount the likelihood that it would happen to their own proof of work cryptocurrency, in this case, Ethereum Classic, uh, and undervalue what the, the, the level of security that Bitcoin has means for, you know, means for Bitcoin's network as a whole. So I do think that that is something that I personally take into consideration. I think a lot of other people might think about as well, but uh, it can certainly be underrated too. And now there's another thing that I'd love to, you know, love to point out as well when it comes down to this is uh, XRP or other types of crypto assets like it that may or may not have the possibility of getting 51% attack. And as soon as this happened, uh, David Schwartz, the CTO of, of Ripple, Came out and said, you know, this this can't happen to this can't happen to XRP. Uh, you know, with this fifty one percent attack cannot happen. They you know certainly might have a a much smaller vector of attack when it comes down to uh, proof of work because XRP is not proof of work. But you also have to take into consider other attack vectors when you look at maybe an XRP or anything else like that. You know, XRP is not proof of work, so it's not going to get fifty one percent attacked. However, it is arguably more centralized uh, and that opens it up to an attack vector from governments or from regulation. It, they might be, you, know, you might not be able to 51% attack XRP, but something that rhymes with uh, shme 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 uh, or alternatively the SEC, uh, you might be very open to a 51% attack from the SEC when it comes down to uh, the long hammer of the law. So there's other components that you have to take into consideration when a lot of this type of stuff happens. And I'm seeing, you know, just jokes and things like that about XRP in general. Uh, and the replies to the Coinbase tweet are are quite frankly fantastic. If we go into, you know, if we go into some of them, Whew, glad I'm all in on XRP. Did I mention XRP is immune to double spend attacks? No, XRP is immune to double spend attacks awaiting wealth transfer. And if we pop down here, no chance of a 51% attack on the XRP blockchain. Hashtag just saying. Uh, and if we go down and go down and go down and go down and go down, uh, it's essentially going to keep saying the same thing. Weird. This is never going to happen to XRP. Perhaps you enjoy incurring unnecessary costs. Now, you could certainly, if you're an XRP fan, you could certainly say, hey, you know, Coinbase, you listed uh, a shit coin, Ethereum Classic, that got 51% attacked and has proven it's perhaps not secure. We're seeing that now. The valid criticism. On the other end of the spectrum, maybe it can't be 51% attacked, but again, it might be very vulnerable to governments, to regulators, to things of that nature uh, because of the potentially centralized nature of it so where something might have a a higher degree of an attack vector something else might be vulnerable in another place always something that in a halfway non-biased way you want to think about and take into consideration as you continue to look at this space Outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to provide a little bit of color to the situation that is ongoing with Ethereum Classic. Uh, again, I've said this in the past and I'll say it again. Uh, proof of work cryptocurrencies, especially the less secure ones with less hash power, uh, securing the network are very vulnerable to 51% attacks. And if there are financial incentives in place to short those assets uh, or to really just control or double spend the network, there are some really incredible things that incredible in a probably not a good way, but some incredible things that might happen that we saw shake out with ETC today. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Hope you have a good one. Peace.